All right, folks, we're a week away from Election Day, and uh, we're going to focus today on two very key Senate races, one in Montana, one in North Dakota. I think Mitt Romney's going to win. Uh, I really do. All the momentum is there. Uh, and I don't see anything in this uh, hurricane messing anything up there at all. But uh, if he doesn't, if Barack Obama were reelected, our only hope is the United States Senate. That's the firewall to stop us from a radical Obama agenda that would be unencumbered by the need to be reelected. And one guy that's going to help us do that is our friend Danny Reberg, member of the House uh, from Montana, now a candidate for the U.S. Senate there. Congressman, how you been? Good morning, Scott. I've been good, and uh, sure enjoy watching that race in North Dakota as well. What are the odds we'd have a Berg and a Reberg in the Senate at the same time, but that's going to happen. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, give us an update. How's things going there for you? Things are going very well. I've got Senator Brasso in the state for me today. Senator McCain is coming in on Wednesday for a second time, and we're just creating a contrast of philosophies between them and us. And them are uh, Barack Obama and John Tester, and their their uh, path has been one of more government control over our lives, whether it's Obamacare, the failed stimulus, all the EPA regulations that are coming down, uh, trying to do away with fracking and our ability to develop our natural resources in eastern Montana and North Dakota, or ours, which is really reflected best by getting government off our backs, liberating Main Street, moving this economy the direction it needs to. And it would be pretty exciting when we have an opportunity to work with the President Romney. And I think that's the way it's going to happen. Uh, you know that uh, Mr. Obama is not in North Dakota or Montana. There's a reason for that. They're not very popular. The policies are not very popular. And that's helping me in Montana win this race. Yeah, I was just uh, talking about Bill Clinton being here last night. They gave him the script, obviously, because Obama's name didn't come up. But it came up one time, so he messed up. He, you know, in, 40, in a 40-minute speech, uh, one time. But he, here's the top surrogate for Barack Obama comes in. He's all over the country, Obama this, Obama that. And he comes here, no mention of Obama. I, I think that's just phony. I mean, isn't that, uh, you know, isn't that you know, uh, sort of uh, hoping voters are dumb by, uh, by, by trying to disconnect themselves from uh, their president? This is the same thing that uh, John Tasser has done in Montana over the course of this entire campaign. I want to talk about repealing the president's health care reform. He looks over in the corner and says, look, squirrel. He hopes that he can divert your attention away from the issues that matter. They're bringing up all these peripheral things. But what we really want to talk about is the uncertainty in our economy that's holding our economy back. And America has an amazing ability to overcome uh, a lot of things, but the, the, as the government grows, is very difficult to do. And it's not one tax, it's not one regulation, it's the cumulative effect of all of them that is crushing our ability to create jobs and build a better economy. Uh, the reason the Montana race and the North Dakota race are so important is obviously uh, they would be they, they'd be a pickup for Republicans. They take Democratic seats now in the Senate. John Tester, the current uh, occupant of that spot in Montana, and uh, of course Ken Conrad retiring uh, here. So in your case, you're looking to defeat the incumbent. And uh, in the case of North Dakota, it's an open seat. But these are uh, obviously uh, Republican uh, switches from from the Democratic side. Why, why they are so extraordinarily important and and really that I mean I, I see it, uh, Congressman, as the firewall. It's the protection that if uh, Barack Obama does get reelected, we'll have something to stop the bleeding, and or if it is a Romney presidency, which it looks more and more like it will be uh, every day, that you got a chance to undo the uh, uh, just really uh, uh, sickening tactics of, uh, of Harry Reid of uh, doing nothing can be a check and balance, and there is no path to a victory uh, in the United States Senate for a Republican majority that does not go through Montana, North Dakota, Nebraska, and Wisconsin. We must win those four states to get a clear majority. We think that uh, Mitt Romney is going to win, so three are absolutely necessary. We must undo things like Obamacare. The very cost of it alone can crush our economy. And if we don't have that firewall, if we don't have the protection of the of the Senate, uh, then we can't accomplish that. And so these races are very important. That's why I'm working so hard to uh, beat an incumbent. I'm giving it all up. You know, when people say, well, why are you doing this? I said, I have to. I'd rather not serve in Congress than not have tried to make a difference to change the direction of this country. When you mentioned the debt that's been created, I will point out that when Senator Tester went into office, it was an $8 trillion debt. He has doubled it since he's been in office. This guy can spend money like crazy, and so we must change the direction. You can't do it if we don't win Montana, North Dakota, Nebraska, and Wisconsin. Montana, like North Dakota, has a, a strong energy economy, and, uh, and a, you know the Williston Basin is in the... In Montana as well. Talk a little bit about uh, what happens if uh, Barack Obama is reelected or there is a, a, a Democratic Senate uh, to that oil industry. Well, 
question is, so what's it going to do with the Keystone? Are we really going to get that built? That was my bill, by the way, my legislation to uh, make him make a decision. He made the wrong one. And while people like John Tester say they support the Keystone Pipeline, his number one contributor to his race is the League of Conservation Voters, the environmentalists who are the biggest opponents of the Keystone. So they can stop energy development by slowing down the ability to build the infrastructure necessary to take advantage of it. Or they can have the EPA continue working on fracking regulations, which will bring our industries in North Dakota and eastern Montana to a standstill. Uh, they're doing it. Uh, I'm, I'm watching it. I'm on a committee, uh, Labor, Health and Human Services Education, where I see what they're trying to do with the Department of Labor, what they're trying to do with the Department of Health, and they can do it through regulations, not necessary legislation, and there's not a lot that the Congress can do about it if we don't have control of the House and the Senate, and that's why it's so critical that we win this Senate. We've got to stay focused on it. Otherwise, we're not going to have a meaningful, comprehensive energy policy. They'll continue working on the alternatives like wind and solar and geothermal, which is fine. But traditional fossil fuel is what drives our economy today. Much of our economy in North, uh, North Dakota and Montana, but it drives our economy nationwide. We cannot afford to have them in there trying to implement things like cap and trade using regulations. A real clear politics average on the polling data has you with a point three percentage point lead. This thing is tighter than a tick. Uh, and uh, what, what would you like from our audience? How can we help you? <laughs> well, the, the poll that came out uh, last week was Rasmussen had it 48-48. I've been in this thing for a year and a half. I feel like I'm running a marathon on a treadmill. I need the folks from eastern Montana to make one more phone call, to drag a neighbor to the polls, uh, to put up one more yard sign, to check their Rolodex, and just make sure that their friends and relatives uh, are, know that I'm in the race. I'm creating the, the philosophical contrast of less government versus what they're giving us. If you want a brighter future, if you want ability to get the government off your back, you need to get people out to vote. This is all about turnout now. we got one week. We're all over Montana just spreading our message, and I tell you, I've just got phenomenal volunteers. I can't say enough to the support that I'm getting, especially from eastern Montana. They get it out there and they're going to come in strong for me. But it, this thing, um, he won, he beat Conrad Burns in 2006 by 3,600 votes. Oh. And this is going to be very close. It's a On rail. Well, we're, 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 we're not to come. Get out there, folks. Call friends, call yeah, neighbors, call you. co-workers. Take care, Danny. Good to talk to you. Danny Reberg, congressman headed for the U.S. Senate from Montana. 